Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel, our Wildfly YouTube channel. Um, today we have uh, another interview with uh, one of our uh, uh, engineers based in Canada, but uh, I'll let you, Farah, introduce yourself. Sure. Hi everyone, my name is Farah and I've been an engineer at Red Hat for a little over 10 years now. I'm located just outside of Toronto in Canada. So during my time at Red Hat, I've worked on different things related to Wildfly, but for the past seven years or so, my focus and my passion has been security. So I lead the Wildfly Elytron project. Elytron is a security framework that's used by Wildfly. So within Wildfly, Elytron is used to secure applications that are deployed to the server and also to secure management access to the server. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that although we developed Elytron for Wildfly, it is a standalone library, so it can theoretically be used in other Java server environments as well. Cool. Uh, yes, uh, yes, out of curiosity, you told us that you work at uh, you know, a lot of things and in the last uh, seven years on security. Um, just a quick question. Do you remember your first interaction with the community, your first uh, commit or pull request, depending on when it happened? Yeah, so I do remember. Uh, so when I was a university student studying computer science, I actually had the chance to do a 16-month internship at Red Hat. So I joined the JBoss application server team. And for those who don't know, Wildfly was formerly known as JBoss application server or JBoss AS. So at the time, I knew a little bit about open source, but my internship was really my first big introduction to open source projects. And so my first commit was a bug fix for one of the management consoles for JBoss AS. And I guess as a fun fact, uh, back then we used to use Subversion for version control. Before returning on, on your first contact uh, on open source, uh, uh, quick question just to know a bit more about you, your uh, last reading uh, book uh, and uh, your favorite one and the same for movie maybe okay yeah so the last book that i read was seven habits for highly effective people as part of our book club at work um, and i would say that my favorite book is the harry potter series uh, for movies uh, my favorite movie is star wars and the last movie that i saw was murder on the orient express okay great choice about the movie but well also on the book but uh, which one uh, from Harry Potter saga? The first one. Returning on, on the open source, uh, a question about uh, open source uh, uh, and uh, your, uh, your feeling with open source. Uh, why you love open source and why do you think it's still relevant, if you think it's still relevant? In, and when, when I say relevant, I mean from a business perspective. Yeah, so I really love open source because it allows people with different backgrounds from all over the world to collaborate together to solve important problems. So when multiple people are working together on something and contributing their ideas, we end up with a much better solution than when just a few people are working on something, you know, without any feedback or input from others. Another nice thing about open source is that a lot of the time contributions are being reviewed by more than one person. And so I think that we end up with much higher quality code as a result. Uh, and I guess for the second part of your question, uh, open source is definitely still relevant. Um, if we think just about the past couple years, we've been in a pandemic. And one thing that really stood out to me was the number of open source projects that were created to tackle COVID. So there were projects um, to help model data, projects to help uh, people find healthcare providers, and so on. So I think open source is definitely here to stay. We are lucky uh, in a wide flight team, I think, because uh, we are a very diverse team. Uh, mm -hmm. We have people uh, coming uh, from everywhere around the world as uh, uh, who is watching. Uh, you start learning because uh, very different uh, um, part of the world uh, for uh, for uh, everyone I'm interviewing. But, uh, well, you, you mentioned in the beginning that you are leading um, an open source project uh, later on, and uh, you are a woman in computer science uh, leading an open source project. This is still considered somehow unusual 
and and as father of uh, a daughter passionate of uh, um, of technology and uh, science and, uh, and things like that, uh, I I I think uh, it is totally wrong to consider this unusual, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, that said, still uh, th there is a. Um, there is some kind of bias uh, in uh, in science and in technology regarding uh, diverse people in general for sex, race, orientation, but should not. I, I I'd like to to hear your comment on that, but uh, more important, uh, uh, your experience in open source world as a, a leader of open source world, but uh, a woman. Yeah, so it's no secret that women are underrepresented in open source projects and in STEM. And as a result, we're missing ideas and contributions from a really big chunk of the population. Um, so I think that it's really important that we all try to work together to increase the number of contributions that are being made by women. Um, and by doing that, by increasing the number of contributors, we will improve the quality of our solutions. So in my opinion, um, I think it's really important for open source projects to try to encourage contributions from diverse contributors. So as an example, last year, the Wildfly Electron project participated in two open source days that were hosted by the anitab.org community. So these were all day hackathons where the goal of the event was to promote contributions that are being made by women in tech and also to try to help guide participants through making their first contributions to open source projects. So that was a really great initiative for us to participate in to really try to help make a difference. Um, another event that we participated in last year was Hacktoberfest. So that's an annual event that takes place in October. And the goal is to try to encourage contributions from the community. So that was another chance for us to raise awareness about our project, and we were able to reach contributors that we hadn't previously reached. Um, something else that I think is really important is that open source projects should really try to make new contributors feel welcome in their communities. So as an example, having like a detailed contribution guide can really help to reduce the barrier to entry for an open source project. Um, another example is having a labeled list of issues that are good for getting started with on a project. So that's something else that's really easy to do, and it can really help uh, make contributing to open source projects feel a lot less daunting for new contributors. Yeah, yeah, great uh, suggestion. And, and I, I will put uh, in, uh, in the description of this video some reference to the events uh, you, you mentioned, uh, maybe some blog post also. Uh, that is uh, relevant in this area because you know you have uh, a few you know, wild fly, in a wildfly in a wildfire return project. So uh, you already anticipated uh, quite a lot, but uh, my next question will be on uh, any suggestion for uh, newcomers and that want to contribute to an open source project. Let's say a return, but uh, more general, every open source project probably has the same suggestion. Yeah, so I would say first find a project that you're interested in contributing to. So maybe it's something you use for fun, maybe it's something that you use for work, something like that. So once you've found that project, uh, first check to see if they have a contribution guide. Um, a lot of projects do have something like this, and it can help you figure out the steps that you need to know in order to submit that first pull request. Um, I'd also say don't be shy about reaching out to project maintainers. So feel free to ask a question on your pull request or maybe even ping the maintainers directly in chat. Uh, something else to keep in mind is that there's lots of ways to contribute. It doesn't have to be a pull request. So as an example, uh, maybe you found a bug uh, with the project that you could create an issue for, uh, or maybe you have an idea for a feature request. Another example um, could be to monitor the user forum for a project if there is one, um, and you could maybe ask a question or even try to help answer someone else's question. And then another example would be to create a blog post so you could show how to configure something or talk about something that you've learned. So I think there's just a variety of ways to get involved in open source projects. Yeah, great, great. And uh, 
somehow the, the opposite question. Are there anything in your project uh, you are developing, you, you are keen to hear a feedback? Yeah, that's a great question. So we've been getting a lot of feedback lately about the new native support for OpenID Connect in Wildfly. So please keep that feedback coming. Uh, we do have a bit more work and testing to do with other OpenID providers besides Geekloak. But if anyone has been experimenting with other OpenID providers as already, um, we'd love to get that feedback as well. Okay, thank you. And the very last question, um, your last contribution to community, yours or your team last contribution to community? Yeah, so speaking of OpenID Connect, um, I have a blog on this channel that shows how to secure an application deployed to Wildfly on OpenShift with OpenID Connect. So be sure to check that out. And also just to mention, uh, we also have another recent blog from Diana Krupinska. She's another Elatron team member, and she's just added a video on how to use Let's Encrypt with Wildfly. So be sure to check that one out as well. Yes, 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 it's a great video too. And so I think we are, uh, we are good with this interview. You, you gave us a great insight on open source and on the Elatron project. In the description, you will find all the reference to the project if you want to contribute or to reach out Farah. Uh, as, as she said, don't be afraid to reach out or to ask any guidance. And don't remember to subscribe. Subscribe this channel because, uh, uh, as we mentioned, there is also some good uh, guide, video guide to, to use the new features and other interview. And have fun. Thank you again, Farah. Thanks for having me.